Hey guys, I know it's been a minute since I last posted. This year the uh, chronic fatigue just has been kicking my butt and I've, uh, I think I put too many things on my plate <laughs> for, for uh, expectations that I had of myself and uh, sometimes things slip. So um, hopefully I'll be back a little bit more regularly, but again, I won't make any promises. Um, but I wanted to show you what's happening in the greenhouse and in the garden and uh, ask touch base with you guys but how you guys are doing how's your garden growing how are how are you doing are you excited for summer um what is something you're looking forward to and i would love to hear i would love i would love for this to be a community where we support and encourage each other and and uh so i'd love to hear in the comments if there is something that you've struggled with that you found a hack or a trick or a way to overcome or you've been working through or you want help um, figuring out um, and then I'd also like if you read a comment and you think you have something positive and encouraging to add I'd love it if you did that as well let's just be a good community to each other we all need that and in an age of easy content constantly on our phones I think sometimes we need to make an effort to make it matter when we say stuff online. So make it matter, guys. All right, so let's look at the greenhouse. There is still no floor in here because it is on order. And I still have a bunch of blocks. These are not the blocks that are going to make up the floor. These are just blocks we had um, laying around. So we try to put them in here to retain a little bit of extra heat this time of year. As you can see, I've got a fan going. Well, it's not on right now. My little fan wasn't enough to handle all of these. So also, you'll notice these peppers are dead. And basically what happened is they were a little bit too close to the heater. Uh, so we've moved the heater back and I also put up a couple of blocks. These are several inches higher than the peppers. Um, this happened, I think, a week ago, and, um, yeah, so I put up blocks to protect the rest of the peppers, and I did move that back, um, but sometimes stuff just happens, and you just gotta figure out how to live with it. So, overall, the peppers are looking really good, um, They've, they've uh, recovered quite nicely. So I've been keeping this cover partially over them most sunny days um, and then just giving them a little bit more time each day with the cover off to harden them off to how much sunlight they're getting in here. Um, and now I'm comfortable leaving them completely uncovered. Well, mostly uncovered. Um, all day long. Uh, it's a really nice, beautiful, bright day in here. And as you can see, they're growing really nice. Um, the space between here and here shows you how leggy they were when when they first sprouted inside. And then if you look at the branch spacing up at the top here, it's a lot tighter. And that tells me that they're getting enough light and they're, they're doing really well. And the same is true for the peppers. You can sort of see the, the gaps are getting shorter. And that tells me that they're getting enough sunlight. And I also went ahead and I made my own plant trays because these guys take up a lot of space this way, but they don't fit all that many plants. And there was extra space and I wanted to be able to get more plants under this tunnel. We're still covering it at night and that heater is keeping them at 18 degrees overnight so that they're not getting too cold. They can handle being cooler than that, but I want them to keep growing and cooler temperatures tend to slow that growth down. So that's my frost protection and my protection from them getting too cold. So I wanted to get more plants under here. And to do that, I'm gonna have to shift my hands here, so bear with me. I built my own trays. Now these are made of plywood and strips of probably half inch by an inch and a half 
Um, these are actually made out of the crates that we got our greenhouse kit in. Um, the greenhouse kit came in, in these really well constructed crates. So we pulled the whole, we pulled them all apart. We saved all the screws and all the wood and I repurposed them into potting trays that fit perfectly in these beds. And as you can see, these tomatoes have a really good happy root system. They should be happy in these cups for probably another three weeks, I'd say for sure. They should be all right. So that's about enough time to get us back in, into the garden. Um, so that's really encouraging. And of course I have way more tomatoes here than I could ever grow or eat. And I am planning, if you are a local, um, I am planning on doing a bit of a plant sale out here, as well as a bit of a seed swap. So I've got seeds for things like peas and snow peas and corn that I'm going to be giving away for free. And the plants I'll be giving, uh, I'll be selling for a small charge. I haven't quite figured out the math yet. Um, because of the cost of the materials and the soil and the everything. I won't be giving them away for free for free, but I will be giving them away at a, at a low price. And most of my varieties are unique varieties that you won't find in the greenhouse. So I'm not, I'm not actually competing with any of the local businesses. I'm sort of offering a different, more varied um, product. So if you're local, I am really looking forward to that. I'm working on figuring out dates um, that will work for me. And as soon as I've got that figured out, <laughs> trying to put this in one handed, this is not a good idea. The, uh, the hoops take up just, just enough space to make it uncomfortable. And the plastic is in the way. All right. There we go. Yeah, so if you're local, I'm really looking forward to that. I wanna make it a day um, where we'll, we'll have a craft of coffee, we'll have some tea, uh, water, some refreshments, you can come and sit, hang out, and, um, we can just talk gardening, and you can, if you want, you can bring your garden plans, and we can brainstorm, I'd love, I just love to, you know, talk with you guys, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, as so you can also see, I've got my clear, clear, the, uh, there, there's a clear plastic thing that goes over top of this. I moved this into the greenhouse yesterday and today I'm going to be moving my plants that are inside out here um, into this unit. So they'll get more light and all of my plants will be in the same place, which will be nice. So that's what my plan for today. Um, there's a bit of a mess going on in here. Um, my water hoard. Um, but we are going to get this cleaned up in preparation for, um, for that open day. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm very excited to be able to plant these out pretty soon. As you can see, their roots are really, really ready to go out in the garden. And as soon as I'm sure that it's not going to freeze below about minus five, I'm actually going to plant all of my onions out into the garden. They can handle a decent frost, and these guys have been hit by frost a couple times in here. As you can see, these lettuces are doing really well. I have a bit of an aphid problem over on this side. I've been trying to keep the um, tomatoes and peppers really well segregated from the aphid problem over here, and I have been spraying, but with the size and the tightness of these leaves, it's a little hard to get all of them, and they just keep coming back. So if you know of a local source, for neem oil, which I've been trying to find, uh, please hit me up and I would love to get me some of that. Um, my lettuce tray, these I seeded and then planted out and I think they've been struggling for uh, a number of reasons. One, you can see these have been burnt, so too much sunlight. Um, and also I think really, really cool nights, so they're sort of not germinating evenly. But that does tell me something about what, what will grow happily here and what won't. Um, I think for the lettuce seeds, I'm going to just germinate them inside and then move them out here for future. And there is my brassicas looking lovely. Oh, there's aphids on these too. I'm not selling these, so I'm less worried about it, but I will come out and spray them just to keep the numbers down. And this is all the, well, this isn't actually all my brassicas. This is most of them. 
This is the broccoli, the kale, the cabbage, the cauliflower. So, anyways, quite exciting. And there's not even that much snow left outside. Um, I can take you to go see what that looks like. I'm sorry if I'm short of breath. It's just happening right now. But we are going to turn this fan on. And that's going to do two things. It's going to keep the temperature in here nice and even throughout the greenhouse. And it's going to give all of these tomatoes and peppers a good bit of wind. As you can see, you really want to get all the leaves shaking. I might actually move it closer and then sort of shift it from one end to the other um, from one day to the next so that they all get a really good shaking. Um, and that just helps them to strengthen their stems against the wind. So when they go outside, they don't immediately snap. Which I have had happen and it was devastating. Learn from my mistakes. All right. So we've got some snow, but as you can see, my little creek is dry for the first time in three weeks. There's no water or ice here, which is pretty exciting. And I can walk it with shoes, which is also exciting. Sorry about the wind. I'm gonna stop apologizing for things I cannot not control. <laughs> so there is some snow, um, but, and this looks like there's some pretty bad tip burn here. This is a, uh, um, nah, my brain. This is a pear tree, but if you'll notice, some of these tips are dark in color. They're sort of gray, whereas the new wood on the healthy tips is a bit of a rosier tint to it. And if I snap this, you'll see it's just black on the inside. So what's happened here is this plant does not like being exposed above the snow, and you'll see it's pretty much at this level. Um, everything above that has has tip burn on it. Uh, so this might end up just being a self-pruning pear tree. Um, or it might be that once it gets a little bit bigger and older, it'll actually be able to survive the winter a little bit better. But it is still alive, and this is its, I think, third winter. At the very least, it's the second winter that it's survived. Um, so, at least it lives. And that's, that's an encouraging sign. The hardier one over there looks pretty good in comparison. And most of the fruit trees look pretty good. So, anyways, this is the garden. It's a little messy. It's a little bit muddy and squishy. And I don't think I need to mulch this section because it's been very thoroughly mulched by Zolt, uh, seeds, uh, sunflower seed. Um, in Low German, we'd call this Speiler. Um, basically, it's just the, the, the hulls of the cracked sunflowers. It's a pretty heavy coat, and I'm going to want to brush most of them off of that bed because black seeded sunflower hulls can actually inhibit um, growth hormones in plants. <laughs> But it should make a good mulch, I guess. <laughs> Gotta fill up the bird bath. Oh, there's still plenty of puddles for them. And it's all just a bit messy and dirty and dingy, and it's gonna stay looking that way for a little while. But there is good news down here. This is an oregano, which I think is only supposed to be zone five. But it is alive. This is not new growth. This is still from last year, but it survived under the snow right at the base of the plant. And that is why you shouldn't always believe zone information. So, so I think we'll leave it there for today. Uh, but it's been nice catching up and I hope to chat with you in the comments. All right, see ya.